Did you know about the violent past of Luke Maloney, the former president of the Hells Angels Angel City chapter? His history has resurfaced in a recent assault case, casting a dark shadow over his current legal troubles. Maloney's past actions are now coming to light, making his present situation even more complicated. Yes, this 43-year-old Bicky boss has been convicted again after spending over a year in jail. The question now is, what did he do? Maloney was sentenced for his involvement in a 2022 incident where he assaulted a former member. The attack was carried out with Cain Montebello, president of the Hells Angels Darkside chapter. As many of us know, the Hells Angels Darkside chapter made a big splash when it opened in 2013 in the Mornington Peninsula and Seaford areas, just south of Melbourne, Australia. It was a significant event because it was the first new Hells Angels clubhouse to open in Australia in 11 years and the only one south of Melbourne CBD. This chapter was seen as a key part of the Hells Angels operations in Australia. The Dark Side chapter already has many leadership problems and criminal issues. Muhammad Koda, a former president, was sentenced to 7.5 years in prison in 2015 for selling over $220,000 worth of methamphetamine, also called ICE, to undercover police in New Zealand. Another former president, Andrew Lamositel Brown, was convicted of murder in New Zealand after being deported from Australia under the 501 policy, which targets members of outlaw motorcycle gangs. Now there's trouble with Montebella. Maloney and Montebella went after a supporter of the Hells Angels at Maloney's home in Reservoir. They planned to kick him out of the club and take back his gear because he was connected to a member of the rival Mongols. When the victim arrived, Montebello menacingly pointed a wooden bat at him. Maloney then closed the garage door and positioned himself in front of it, blocking the alternate exit. Montebello slapped the victim and forcibly grabbed his nose ring, completing the assault. In response, the victim pushed Montebello away, stood up, and ran towards the back fence. A third man joined the altercation, grabbing the victim's right leg. Despite being hit with the bat by Montebello, the victim managed to kick free, fall from the fence, and swiftly escape. Although Maloney did not physically assault the victim, the court found that he brandished a hunting knife during the incident. The judge noted that Maloney and Montebello had collaborated in an attack that resulted in the victim, a man in his 20s, being hospitalized at the Royal Melbourne Hospital with arm and upper body injuries. The judge emphasized that the assault was morally and legally unjustified, pointing out that the victim was outnumbered and at a significant disadvantage. The judge also highlighted that Maloney had approved the punishment and characterized the incident as both morally and legally wrong. This collaboration between Maloney and Montebello led to the victim's hospitalization, underscoring the severity and brutality of the assault. The judge emphasized that the assault happened with Maloney's approval and described the incident as both morally and legally unjustified. The victim was significantly outnumbered and at a disadvantage. Maloney and Montebello were charged with several offenses, including intentionally causing serious injury, recklessly causing serious injury, assault, assault with a weapon, extortion, possessing poison, and committing an indictable offense while on bail. The court condemned their behavior, calling the assault unpleasant and unjustified. Both Maloney and the 33-year-old Montebello pleaded guilty to intentionally causing injury. Maloney also admitted to handling stolen goods and possessing a scheduled poison after police found a book of prescription forms and a box of medication at his home. Maloney told the judge that he had since renounced his membership with the Hells Angels and had disassociated himself from both the members and supporters of the club. He was convicted, placed on a 12-month good behavior bond, and fined $1,500. The judge mentioned that Maloney's sentence seemed lenient because it took into account the 379 days he spent in custody after his arrest. 
The judge also considered Maloney's work ethic and his stable relationship with his partner and 10-year-old son. Montebello was convicted as well and received an 18-month good behavior bond and a $1,200 fine. Maloney is set to return to court on February 28 to contest the drug possession charge. He was arrested in April 2022 by ECHO Task Force detectives during an investigation into drug trafficking linked to the Hells Angels. Police searched two residences in Reservoir and Glenroy, seizing an imitation a K-47, drugs including human growth steroids and cocaine, a quantity of cash and drug paraphernalia. Known as Cool Hand Luke, Maloney rose to prominence as the head of the Angel City Charter and earned a national president position in July 2021. A former boxer, he maintained affiliations with both the Melbourne and Sydney Hells Angels chapters, proudly displaying badges from both locations along with a significant Filthy Few patch. The Filthy Few patch signifies a member's involvement in a violent act on behalf of the Hells Angels. It is a coveted award given only to the most dedicated and hardcore members, marking their commitment and willingness to go above and beyond for the club. Luke Maloney is one of these influential members. As a former president of the Nomads chapter, he commands respect not only within the Hells Angels, but also among members of other prominent clubs. The Hells Angels operate five chapters across the North, Centre, Northeast and Southeast regions of Australia. Their largest membership base is in New South Wales, where they have seven chapters, particularly concentrated in Western Sydney. They also have a strong presence in South Australia, with four chapters, and in Western Australia, with three chapters. The club continues to expand in Queensland, where they have two chapters, and in the Northern Territory with one chapter. Despite Luke Maloney's insistence that he is no longer affiliated with the Hells Angels, law enforcement remains skeptical. Police have raised doubts about his claimed separation from the club, citing ongoing investigations and intelligence that suggest there may be more to the story. The skepticism surrounding Maloney's claims is intensified by his long association with the Hells Angels and his history of holding significant positions within the club. This presents him with the challenge of convincing authorities of his disassociation. Law enforcement officials point out that it's not uncommon for bikers with club affiliations to make such claims in court in hopes of securing a lighter sentence. Currently, Hells Angels Motorcycle Club have established 475 chapters spread across 62 countries and 89 areas, showing their extensive influence. Some of the countries where the Hells Angels have a significant presence include the United States, Canada, Australia, and various European nations. This widespread reach highlights the club's impressive ability to establish itself in diverse regions around the world. While they present themselves as a group of motorcycle enthusiasts, they have been entangled in numerous criminal allegations and incidents over the years. These range from drug trafficking to violent crimes, and much more, casting a long shadow over their reputation. One of the most serious accusations against the Hells Angels is their involvement in drug trafficking. Members of the club have been accused of dealing in illegal drugs, particularly methamphetamine. This has brought them under intense scrutiny from law enforcement agencies, who see them as a significant player in the illegal drug trade. In addition to drug trafficking, there have been numerous reports of Hells Angels members committing violent crimes. These crimes include assault, murder, and various forms of gang-related violence. The club has often been involved in violent clashes with rival motorcycle clubs, leading to bloody confrontations and sometimes deadly outcomes. The Hells Angels have also faced serious allegations of sex crimes. In the 1960s and 1970se, particularly in California, there were reports of rape, gang rape, and other forms of sexual assault committed by members of the club. These allegations have added to the club's notoriety and further tarnished their public image. 
Law enforcement agencies in several countries have classified the Hells Angels as an organized crime group. This classification is based on their alleged involvement in a wide range of criminal activities, including extortion, money laundering, and the trafficking of stolen goods. These activities have led to numerous legal battles and crackdowns by police forces trying to curb their influence. One particularly alarming incident involved the Hells Angels infiltrating critical infrastructure. In Denmark, the club reportedly managed to gain control of the port of Aarhus, the country's largest commercial port. Using their members, they transported illegal items through this crucial gateway, showcasing their ability to penetrate and exploit important facilities. Conflicts with rival gangs have been a recurring theme in the Hells Angels' history. They have long-standing feuds with other outlaw motorcycle clubs, like the Bandidos, the Mongols, and the Outlaws. These rivalries have often led to violent clashes, sometimes resulting in severe injuries or fatalities. Despite all these serious allegations, the Hells Angels insist that they are merely a group of motorcycle enthusiasts. They argue that their main interest is riding motorcycles and enjoying the camaraderie of like-minded individuals. However, the extensive criminal allegations and incidents associated with the club have led to significant scrutiny and ongoing crackdowns by law enforcement agencies worldwide. What are your thoughts on the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club? Do you see them as misunderstood motorcycle enthusiasts or as a significant criminal threat? Share your opinions in the comments below. We will continue to monitor this story closely and keep you updated with any new developments. If you enjoy regular, exciting updates about biker news, don't forget to smash that subscribe button.